I will be preaching from our Jeremiah book, that is Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. We get up in the sermon, things to do, and things are to do, and we get up in the God looks at him very compassionately and says, I don't care. You're going to do it anyway. That kind of sets the tone for Jeremiah as in God's relationship. Jeremiah is consistently told to give a hard message. And the hard message is that the Babylonians are coming, that the kingdom of Judah has so critically messed up at this point that nothing they can do can stop the Babylonians from coming, and that exile is soon to follow. Nobody really wants to believe this message because all the world is So Jeremiah is the vision message that goes against all royal propaganda and all normal religious thought, and it's a hard time for good old Jeremiah. But in the middle of the book, we get these few chapters which are remarkably hopeful. And it's all You can hear the hope at the beginning as because it's always about hope is always about to come whenever God starts speaking this way. When God says the days are surely coming. It's a key word for knowing that, that hope is on the way. The days are surely coming when I will make a new covenant for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. This covenant I will make with Israel in those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them. I will write on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Put another way, God's saying, I'll open up the heart of the heart of the And after this part of God says, one, we don't need to teach each other anymore, know the Lord. I once looked at my mom when she told me I had to go to confirmation class, and I said, why? It says right there, I, you don't have to teach me anymore. It didn't work. So we'll all know me, says the Lord, from the least to the greatest. And then this is the most wonderful part of the whole thing, right at the end of verse 34, where I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will forgive and they will remember their sin. There are times in our lives where we really need to be reminded that only that thing is in the there are times in life where we are not going to be able to do that. There are times like that. There are five things to learn. I don't think any of us are going to be able to do that. I think we've got that part down. And sometimes people need what we feel in life is that we are beyond hope and we are beyond hope. There are times in life where we think that but I have so hopelessly messed up that there is no way out of this pit I have dug for myself. There are times in our life that we say there is no possible way I can recover from this failure. And 
So Jeremiah comes to us today to those of us who are feeling that way and says, God will forgive and God will be with you. God will forgive. God will be with you. The two must go together, forgiveness and remembering no more. For we need the forgiveness that we need that forgiveness that says yes, we can stop, but yes, we want to stop and forgive, and yes, the situation is being focused, but God can create something new, He promises a new covenant, and a new heart, and a new truth. We need that word of forgiveness, but we also need to hear that our sins are not to be numbered anymore. But if we need to know that our sins, our mess our failures, and our inadequacies aren't just kind of lurking on things we could miss to be brought up to the But they're not just waiting in the tall grass to sing to haunt our dreams at 2 a.m. in the morning. Who does that thing, right, when you wake up at like 2 a.m. and remember that time in like fourth grade where you said something embarrassing? Right? When you say to your mind, I don't know why you're reading yourself like this, but I just want to say to the very best of us. Jesus and our gospel John made in Jesus. Jesus says in verse 32, I will draw all people to the Jesus. And you lift it up, I will draw all people to the Jesus. Another way of saying, I will forgive and I will remember no more, that no matter the failures and the pains, Jesus will draw us near to the cross. No matter what. So I'm here to tell you this just to, just to simply say it. That every failure you are responsible for, and every failure you imagine you're responsible for, they're not quite the same thing. Every one of them are forgiven and remembered no more in Jesus Christ. And every inadequacy that you have experienced, and every imagined inadequacy that you have, they are all completely and totally forgiven in Jesus Christ. And they are not just forgiven, but forgotten. We invite you to come and touch that thing with the sun that you are forgiven. Being the reality that you have to God for you in bread and wine. And if you mean I invite you to go to the fingers and the waters of the baptism to know that every stream that you harbor is the water of the baptism. The only question I have for you is what will you go out from here and tell your story? Because in our world, let's be honest, we tell the universe of the God is good. The God says this to give and remember no more. And the world doesn't have to say that the universe is going to be given to the universe for good. But the world needs to hear the word of forgiveness and the word that sins are remembered no more, but the text is this, that it is for all people. So as Jeremiah says, from the least to the greatest, from the beggar in the street and the billionaire, it is for all of them. It is for the people you like and the people you find easy to love, and it is for the people who you find just difficult to get along with and for the people who, for whom you deeply disagree with their lifestyle or their politics or their personality. That, forgi- that forgiveness and that forgetting of sins, it is from the least to the greatest. It is for all people, and all people need to hear. So this St. Patrick's Day... I invite you to be the missionary that St. Patrick was, to go out into the world and proclaim and forgiveness and forgetting. Go out into the world and proclaim and forgiveness and forgetting.